If there's one thing I'm really worried about in this day and age, it's dun dun dun, echo chambers. The reason I'm worried about echo chambers is because I myself was caught in a very big echo chamber for about six months, and it took me a very long time to get out of that before I realized that, hang on, I actually need to rekindle a relationship with a couple of people here, because all I'm seeing is what I'm clicking on all the time, going down that hole, dun 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 dun, until all of a sudden, I can't go any deeper, and I don't know who I am anymore, and no one else knows who I am in the world around me. I think one of the most incredible tools to come from the modern world is social media. And I am referring now specifically to that Netflix documentary called The Social Dilemma. That really opened my eyes to how I was using social media. And I did have to say that I was someone who would always claim that social media was a tool but a tool really doesn't say, like they say in the documentary, use me, use me, use me, use me, use me. And I was always finding myself on social media at times when I shouldn't have been on social media and the echo chambers were growing, the ideologies were growing. I couldn't get myself out of it. When I watched that documentary, the first thing I did was start to follow people from all different areas and walks of life, from politically speaking, from the furthest of the left to the rightest of the right, um, different uh, identities, different people with different ideas, intellectual diversity, people that are into art and painting, and people that are into writing, and people into all different sorts of things, to make sure that I don't lose myself in an echo chamber of my own mind, where everything I see is just, Tom, you're so right. Tom, yes, that's so true. Oh my God, why doesn't everyone see the world like that? You're so brilliant and sexy. You're definitely not a six. You're a nine. If you have found that you are at the bottom of a, a rabbit hole, an ideological rabbit hole, if you find yourself at the very midst of the abyss of the uh, whatever it is, the cultural or political abyss, here's something that you can do right away. And I think it really helps. And it helps from a psychological perspective as well. This is something that we use in counseling. And it's trying to convince yourself that you are wrong. That's a really, really, really powerful thing to do. Where could I be wrong? Where could this person be wrong? I made a video last week about looking into the negative emotions and it was based upon the presidential debate. And this kind of feeds into that as well because I think what you see there with the two potential candidates of the free world of 2020 to 2024 is that you see echo chambers personified. You see the YouTube recommended for you algorithm personified. And that's very, very dangerous because if we start to build an identity, build ego, anything that isn't that ego is going to be very, very terrifying because we don't like to lose our sense of self. The mind cannot exist within an echo chamber. But the best way to build an identity is to have the foundation upon no identity at all. Tom, what do you mean by that? Why not build an identity on consistently killing the identity? That means essentially that we are identified with learning and growing and never being the same and not attaching ourselves to permanence. This is a Buddhist practice to identify with no mind or Wu Wei or no resistance. These are brilliant, brilliant ideas because the worst thing that we can do, and this engenders suffering, is that we stay stuck. We, we don't grow, we don't consider different viewpoints, we don't push our comfort zones, we don't look into the fear and the pain and the shame and wonder why those things were there with this kind of compassionate curiosity that Gabor Mate talks about in one of his books. If we don't do that, the world will become consistently scarier because it will continue to grow and move on long after we have died. So the best thing that we can do is move into that flow. If we do that, we will dissolve the echo chambers that we have found ourselves in. We will turn the YouTube recommended for you algorithm upon its head, and we will start to see the God in other people, the namaste, which means the God in me sees the God in you. We will start to see the God in others because we can see that the pain that they are projecting to the world is obviously the pain that we have inside us as well. That was a very spiritual take on echo chambers and I wasn't uh, meaning for it to go down that way, but I did hope it helped. And as always, guys, I'll speak to you next time. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the content, 
Uh, you are more than welcome to click the link in the description below. That will take you right to a free webinar where I will be taking you exactly through how to design a framework for your life and create that mission that will bring about a sense of intrinsic value to you. Go for it.